Godot ships with a set of powerful tools to animate anything you'd like. Any value you see in the inspector, you can work with. This means you can make UI, characters, you can even add inverse kinematics to your characters, you can call functions from the animation editor, do plenty of things. It's extremely powerful. That's why today we're going to look at the tool's basics. This is a two-part video made in collaboration with Hardbeast, Benjamin. I will show you the tool's basics and then you can head to his channel to see how he animated a cute monster for his game from start to finish. The link's on the screen now and in the video description. Here's an example using the tools in practice. You'll use the animations for everything that's visual in nature most of the time. So the UI element in the bottom right is controlled with animations and so is the ghost. Both it's idle but also the stagger animation when it gets hit. The color is animated with the editor when the character dies, it gets freed up from memory. That is also controlled with the animation, not using the code. It works thanks to this green track at the bottom of the dope sheet. This one controls calling functions from the animation editor. We'll talk about it in a moment. The example project comes with two scenes. The ghost anim example is a finished example with a few animations for you to play with but we will work with the ghost scene. You can open and close the animation tab at the bottom of the viewport anytime. As we don't have an animation player node, we cannot create any animation just yet. So let's add one. Click on your root node and add an animation player. Once you have it, you can see the label disappears on the anim tab and you can create your first animation by clicking this icon. Let's call it rest. This will be our rest pose. And from there, you can select anything in the scene tree and create animation tracks for it. The animation tracks will allow you to add keyframes. This will tell Godot to store values at certain points in time. You can see the key icon that appeared in the inspector next to every single value. Let's go down to the transform of the body and click on the position. You can see a new track appears in your dope sheet, in your anim editor. It tells you that it's on the body and it's the transform slash pose parameter. The key is indicated by this little blue circle. If you click and drag on it, you can move it around in time. If you place it on the zero mark, it will be keyed at the very start of your animation. Let's add some more keyframes to see how the animation system works. Click and drag on the timeline at the top to move the time cursor. The keyframes you insert when you click on the little key icon will be inserted at this point in time. So we can move the character, we can change its position. You can see the value change on the inspector tab. And if you click on the key icon, you will see a new keyframe appear. If you drag on the timeline, character animates. The computer automatically animates from the first key to the second one using a linear interpolation. It will just calculate the average between the two positions weighted by the distance in time. All right, we have to make our rest pose, so let's key some basic parameters we'll use in many different animations on the character. As I explained, this rest pose will allow us to reset the character to this state whenever we need to. At the top of the screen, you will find three buttons that are animation related, lock, rotation, and scale. When they are green, when you click the key icon, it will automatically insert a key for those three tracks. And if you don't have all three of these, it will automatically create them. This is important because these are the three values you will use most often. To insert keys, you can also use the insert key anytime as a shortcut. Let's now do the same for the shadow. So select it. Click on the key button at the top, you will get three tracks for the position, rotation and scale. And you can already see something interesting. When you select a certain node, Godot highlights the corresponding tracks in the dope sheet. 
Now on the shadow, we also want to key the modulate color. It's a very important one. As far as the base values are concerned, maybe you'll want to offset the flip H and V. This can be important for characters when you want to flip them around during the animation. Maybe the visibility as well. And note that we could use the opacity instead of the modulate color. But I think that the modulation gives us a lot more control with the color slider plus the opacity one. The rest pose is the starting point in the animation process. And once you have it, you can create all your animations from it. Let's add an idle animation just for the example. We could create a new empty animation, but instead I recommend to every time go back to the rest pose and duplicate the animation. First of all, let's change the length to have some good defaults. Let's say two seconds, and then we'll change the anim step. I recommend 0.05, that's 20 frames per second. And now we'll duplicate the rest animation. So you get an anim named rest copy. That's not what we want. We want to rename it using the rename icon. Let's call it idle, press enter. And there you have your base idle animation. So the idle is generally a breathing loop. It's when the character is not doing anything. Talking about loops, to loop an animation, click on the enable disable looping button at the bottom right of the tab. So now let's create a simple loop. We'll select the body, that's the one we'll animate. Move the time cursor around one second, for instance. Move the ghost up a little bit. You can use the move tool with the W key and shift to constrain the sprite moving up. Press insert. Because we have all three buttons locked at the top, it will key the pose on the rotation and scale tracks as well. It's very common for animators to key everything at once just to make sure that they are getting this exact pose stored at this exact time. And later on, when you've done animating the character, you can clean up the tracks. So if we drag from zero to one, you'll see the character move up and automatically it will move back down if you go beyond one second because we have the looping animation on. If you take it off, the character will only go up. It will not move anymore around the end of the animation and it won't loop at all. So be sure to make it active for anything that's cycling. For example, a walk, a run cycle, etc. I want to talk about two more things in this video. First of all, this button to the right of the animation names, it's the autoplay onload. If you check it, this animation will automatically play when you start the game. So you don't have to write any code to tell Godot to launch the idle cycle. When the object is created, it will animate automatically. Last but not least, let's look at animation interpolation. If you click on the edit button at the bottom right of the screen, you will see this part of the window, which contains two tab. The first one, key, allows you to edit the time and value of keys individually. If you have a function track, you will be able to edit the function that gets called as well. And then you have the transition tab, which allows you to change the transition between frames. This controls the interpolation, the way the character will move from one frame to the next. Let me select the character's starting position, the starting frame, and then drag to the left to exaggerate the curve. So the character will move fast and slow down as it goes up. I'll also greatly exaggerate the movement, add a key on the one second mark, so press the insert key, and then let's see the result. So it's almost like the character is jumping and then on the cycle, you can see the character linearly interpolates from the current pose to the starting pose. Currently, when the character loops, it goes down linearly to the start position. So we can select the second key and change the curve to make it feel a bit more bouncy. I want to show you one last thing. You can duplicate keys easily. Just select anything. You can drag and drop in the dope sheet to select keys and then right click, select duplicate selection and your selection will be duplicated at the time cursor's position. 
There are some limitations and some quirks in the animation system. It doesn't really follow what you'd expect as a game animator from Flash or Spine or a 3D program. First of all, it uses seconds for steps and you can't really set that precisely if you try to uh, set it to 0.033 to have 30 frames per second, it won't work, it will round down to 0.03. As a game animator, you tend to animate to 30 frames per second when you have a rigged character, otherwise either to 12 or 24. You tend to learn all the timings based on the frames. It's very unsettling to work with seconds instead. The second issue is that there's no setup pose and one problem with that is when you get out of the animation tools, the character remembers its state. So if I switch to a different animation, you'll see it stays with the rotation and the scale. To avoid that, you must create an animation where the character's state is reset, in particular all the tracks that were modified in other animations. This causes problem as well, if you want to try out the game, you'll see the character's base state is messed up until the stag animation plays. Last but not least, if there is a rigging system, because there's no real skeleton, it's kind of fake, it won't zero out the transforms. So you're always working with your character's transforms, unless you add some parent nodes to better control them. That said, there's a graph editor and some improvements coming for Godot 3.1, at least that's the plan. So that will be a good occasion to level up those anim tools and looking at the Godot developer's work, we can be confident that it'll get a lot better. Despite all I just said, the tools are very powerful, so you'll want to make the most out of them. And to do that, head to Heartbeat's channel, you have an example of how he animated a cute monster. Link in the description, on the screen. See you in the next one.